question I've wanted to ask someone with your background. I mean, we hear a lot about terrorist attacks nowadays, you know, but bioterrorism is talked about every once in a while. I mean, what is the state of the art with bioterrorism? Well, I think, for example, an influenza virus is something which could be extremely harmful and extremely lethal. For example, if I have the flu and I'm sitting and talking here with you, the chance that I infect you are extremely high. So every influenza season, 20% of us will get the flu. So in other words, you only have to spread a virus or a bioorganism. You only have to spread that in a very limited limited environment to have an enormous impact. And I think the best example that we have seen has been the SARS outbreak or the recent SARS, age. that's the one that came from Ch China, supposedly? From, yeah, from China, spread very rapidly through Canada because today we don't have borders anymore. People fly right. in airplanes, right. etc. And the H1N1 pandemic influenza could have been huge if it had occurred in an era and in a time where people wouldn't have had influenza vaccines around. So I, I think that bioterrorism is a true threat and that you really have to be... Um, I have to ask you this question because you brought this up. You know, the, during that whole thing with SARS and the H1N1, this thing happened in the country. It almost scared the country to death that they were saying, we can't produce enough units fast enough. Yeah. Remember that whole thing? W was that a media hype or was there really a production problem? I, I think, no, I think that everybody really, unfortunately, a vaccine you need to give to somebody before that person becomes infected. And once a bio organism is out there, people are being infected. So in other words, a vaccine can never be there fast mm -hmm. enough in, because in principle, you want to use a vaccine before the organism is there. And I think that that is the reason why people, why a vaccine will always be late unless you have thought about how can I prevent the disease ahead of time. Okay. And that is something that the United government is spending a lot of time and attention to. They are uh, spending efforts, uh, monies in trying to think about pandemic um, uh, situations and how they can best be prepared for that. You know, uh, companies like yours, mm -hmm. I'm just casting a general net, many times receive their funding from the federal government, perhaps from state government, et cetera. The economy is not in not a very good shape. Yeah. And I mean, we're in such bad shape that they're talking about cutting out trillions and trillions of dollars. Right. How is the current economy affecting you or how do you think it's going to affect you right. if they go ahead with the kind of cuts they're talking about? Well, I think for our company, we are in the very fortunate position that, that the government has recognized that the vaccine industry needs innovation and that the innovation is not going to come from the conventional players. So they have two years ago provided a very large contract to Protein Sciences, a contract of $147 million. Wow, that congratulations. Is money that, that's that's you, federal government, That right? is federal government, that's human health services. And with that money, we are able to uh, really expand our workforce dramatically. So our company has been growing in the last uh, one and a half years from like 40 people to over 90 people. And we're constantly looking for good, you know, for good employees. Scientist good, types, yeah. Scientists, but also people that can help us, you know, establish that commercial manufacturing, okay. that have quality Operations experience, people, people yeah. that can help us So you're us hiring? Build. You're currently hiring? We're hiring a lot of people. Hiring. Yes. Protein Sciences is hiring. Yes, absolutely. So, so we are... In Meriden, Connecticut. In Meriden, Connecticut. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so the government has recognized that. So we are actually basically um, benefiting from the... Um, from, and I, I hate to say this, but from the fact that we really have to think about bioterrorism and, and pandemic preparedness. And, and I'm very grateful for that because that will give our company long term the opportunity to really use our technology there's platform. The, to you know, make there's, other. A, there's this big discussion nowadays. I think it happened. What's the name of that firm? Uh, Solendra, the, the solar panel firm yes. that went bankrupt, went belly up after being given $560 million or whatever it was. But I mean, there's been a major discussion now about what is the government doing funding companies like this? Well, th that's not your industry, but it's an industry that's starting to grow, right. right? So, I mean, if we use this as a somewhat analogous example, I mean, taken to its extreme, 
If funding were cut off vis-a-vis -vis what you just explained to me, right. would you be able to get that kind of money from venture capitalists? No, I think venture capitalists have really said we are not going to invest in biotechnology anymore because they think it's too risky. And what a venture capitalist does is they will go to the big pharma industry and they're going to ask, are you going to buy this company when it is successful? And if they don't get an immediate yes, or they don't get an immediate short-term um, you know, mm -hmm. financial gain, they will not invest. So mm -hmm. I think the government is really trying to support industries where they believe they have to you know, support the industry to make something happen. And I understand from the director of human health services that they're working um, with um, the uh, government at this moment in time to actually make government funds available to make strategic investment in companies that are doing mm -hmm. important things so that they will either benefit or will have a more important say in what direction that company should be taken. Okay, we've got about four minutes left. Okay. <laughs> we've got about four minutes left. Speaking of the United States government, our friends, in this case, your friend, right? <laughs> then a good, you've done well by them and, and vice versa. The regulatory process. I mean, you know what? The layperson says, you know what? You guys take so long to help me get better, yeah. right? And you're thinking to yourself, if you knew what I had to go through, you wouldn't say that, right? right. So very briefly explain to us what you have to go through with three minutes left, right? Yeah. What you have to go through in the typical time it takes. I heard you say before, You've been working at something for 15 years. Exactly. So, so explain to us a little bit. Yeah, then. so you have to first prove in animals that your product works. And then you go through a whole series of clinical trials. And then three years ago, we thought we had the package ready. We had about 60 books this thick. And we submitted them to three the FDA ago. three years ago for review. And then a team of extraordinarily specialists will start looking at your clinical data, at your manufacturing data, at your quality data. And they come to the conclusion like, is is this product going to be beneficial? Now, keep in mind, you give a vaccine to healthy individuals, right? So the risk benefits is going to be very, very uh, difficult to assess mm -hmm. because you don't know whether you're going to get the flu and yet you're going to give this person a vaccine. So it, it is a very long, extremely time-consuming process. It is frustrating. It has been very frustrating to me because it is bureaucratic. It's not that you can pick up the phone, call your reviewer and ask, what, what is it that you need from me? When you have a question for the FDA, you need to put in a formal request and you get a formal answer within 60 days, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a long-term process. Um, what the U.S. government is doing at this moment in time, and I recently spoke with the director of the CBER, um, which is our, the Center for Biologics that is reviewing our product. She said to me, what we are really trying to do is to come closer to the uh, pharmaceutical companies to try to make that process shorter. Because what this does, this long and expensive timeline, it makes the drugs extremely expensive, expensive. and the vaccines, right? So it costs on average. In our case, it will have costed about hundred million dollars to develop this vaccine and therefore if you later are able to sell that vaccine for ten dollars you have to recover the cost you have to recover the cost otherwise it's not sustainable yeah so now we have less than two minutes left All thank right. you for the tutorial by the way in the less than two minutes that we had left have left um, if and when I invite you back a year from now right what will you be telling me has happened in the next year to come yeah, so Protein Sciences is working very hard with, with the entire crew to get um, the influenza vaccine approved, flu block. This is a recombinant influenza vaccine. It, it, it um, will work particularly well in, um, in, in elderly people. It's a vaccine that contains more active ingredient than the vaccine that is currently on the it's market. It's called flu block? Flu block. It, it will... Um, it, it is a, a cleaner vaccine. It contains only the active ingredient. It is not made in embryonated chicken eggs, but it's made in nice sterile bioreactors.